Welcome back students. So, in the previous two modules, module 1 and module 2, we have seen the introduction to chemical process industries in a general way. We have decided on the different types of chemicals, base chemicals, then you know the consumer chemicals and then we went on and then to module 2 where we discussed the sulfuric acid which is one of the base inorganic chemical. Then we also talked about sulfa and then the ammonia the ammonia process in detail. So, going on, going along with the inorganic chemical industries, we go to the second part because this is finally based on two different modules which discusses the inorganic part. In the second part of our uh, module, that is the third module I would say or the second module having the inorganic chemical, we will today's lecture we will focus and start with the nitric acid. So, we will discuss the nitric acid in detail, we will see the thermodynamics of nitric acid uh, formulation and its production and what are the expected the bottleneck, what are the expected physical properties or the some issues in the process, we will see in due course of time. So, this is the inorganic chemical industries, the nitric acid, the reactions and thermodynamics. So, what we will cover in today's uh, classes, we will just introduce the nitric acid we see the nitric acid uh, production. The nitric acid production, if you recollect, this was actually the, I would say the modern nitric acid production that was actually formulated by Ostwald and uh, you must be aware Ostwald was awarded a chemical uh, Nobel Prize for this. So, this is, we will discuss the reactions involved and the thermodynamics of it. So, as I again want to recollect thermodynamics and the kinetics, these are important aspect for any reaction. So, we have to see both thermodynamically and kinetically the reaction is favorable. So, we will discuss those reactions and then different processes. So, uh, what are the different processes nowadays used in the nitric acid plant? There we call these terms the single pressure process, the dual pressure process, the compression expansion. So, this is not a process, but compression expansion. It means that you have uh, required in certain uh, processes, you require compression and in certain processes, uh, you have steam, you can get uh, expansion and the expansion steam can be used for compression. So, they are, you know, these are linked to each other in the form of, let us say, some shaft. So, we will discuss those single pressure means where the pressure is remaining constant while dual pressure means you have two different pressures for two different operation. Then the final section that is the NOx abatement. NOx abatement means this NOx is a primary pollutant in atmosphere. So, you must be now be aware that in our India you have this AQI air quality index now. So, this NOx is one of the primary pollutant. So, you can measure the amount of NOx, NOx is at all not used necessary in the environment. So, it has to be abated. Abated means you have to remove or recover. Either you convert it to nitrogen or some other product you absorb it so that its exhaust or the effluent from such a process is kept to a minimum. So, we will see which processes we use for NOx abatement. So, first introduction. So, we have seen earlier the sulphur based on the elemental sulphur, the sulfuric acid the nitrogen containing we have seen in the earlier class, I mean the earlier module, we have seen the production of ammonia and phosphorus we will see later and chloralkali also in the same module we will see. These are the industries, these are the main producer of the base inorganic chemical, okay. So, with this nitrogen comes nitric oxide. Nitric acid is primarily used for fertilizer manufacturing. So, in a country like India or any other, uh, you know, this whether it is US or Europe, uh, nitric acid production is an important indicator how good the economy is. So, that is one of the key, you know, that factors you take up while you do, that means it gives an indication where the chemical industry is going. So, nitric acid production is one of the key indicator. So, nitric acid physically it is highly corrosive mineral acid. It is a colorless liquid at room temperature having a boiling point of 83 degrees Celsius. Commercially available nitric acid has a concentration of 68 percent in water. So, there are two categories of nitric acid. You have the red fuming nitric acid which is above 86 percent nitric acid in solution and the white fuming above 95 percent nitric acid in solution. So, the plant also provides different uh, strengths of nitric acid based upon the process. So, again I just to recollect in summarized the properties of nitric acid 
IUPAC ID is nitric acid, molar mass, the density, boiling point and the melting point. So this is the nitric acid, how it looks like. So this is, you already are aware of it. So this is very powerful because you have the hydronium ion and the nitrate ion are dissociated in water. So it all is actually fully dissociated in water. So that is what the hydronium ion just now I was telling the nitrate ions they are totally dissociated or ionized in aqueous solution. It is a powerful acid and an effective oxidizing agent. What do you mean by oxidizing agent? So you read chemistry it means that it is an electron acceptor in oxidation reduction processes. So nitric acid is used to make fertilizer which is made up of ammonium nitrate where nitric acid is neutralized with ammonia. So when you react nitric acid with ammonia you get the ammonium based fertilizers. It is also used for making explosives or chemical explosives such as nitroglycerin and TNT, trinitrotoline. So, which is you must be you know you must be knowing these terms. So, these are formulated by nitrating glycerol. So, glycerol and toline are the starting materials for the manufacture of nitroglycerin and TNT. Or you can also use them oxidation of the metallic elements to form the appropriate oxides or nitrates. Or you make in the use of nitrocellulose. Again, nitrocellulose is a vital aspect or the vital ingredient of the fertilizer. It is also used in making plastics and for the manufacture of dyes. But it is mixed with hydrogen chloride acid, this is HCl. It produces what we know as aqua regia. What is this aqua regia? Aqua regia is a dissolvable reagent for gold and platinum. So, it can able to dissolve both gold and platinum. So now let us see what are the production method. In old uh, method uh, what they did was they reacted the sulfuric acid with saltpeter. Saltpeter is nothing but potassium nitrate or from chili saltpeter that is some sodium nitrate. But these had some different inherent disadvantages that is why these methods were scrapped. The modern methods is primarily using the use of ammonia with ammonia. So what they do is there are two step process. It is the catalytic oxidation of ammonia. So, ammonia gets converted to nitrogen oxide and the nitrogen oxide is then made in contact with water that is the absorption process to get nitric acid of required strength. So, this is what we call as the Ostwald process. So, these are the reactions. The overall reaction is this. So, ammonia oxidation. So, ammonia when one mole of ammonia reacts with 2 moles of oxygen, it gives, it is overall reaction right. So, it has a combination of many such reactions, the overall reaction. So, when they are combined together, they form nitric acid and water. So, this is the net heat of reaction for nitric, nitri, nitric acid. So, what are the involved process, what are the different reactions which is involved, these are the 3 reactions. So, all 3 are exothermic. So, if you compare the scale of exothermicity, Though the ammonia in the initial part when it get oxidized, it forms nitric oxide, this is called nitric oxide. So, NO is called nitric oxide and NO2 is called nitrogen dioxide, okay. So, this nitric oxide is formed, this nitric oxide is partially oxygenated or combusted whatever you want to say, it forms nitrogen dioxide. This nitrogen dioxide is again in equilibrium with a dimer. So, it is equilibrium with N2O4, so it equilibrium with dimer. So, both of them exist together. So, when this nitrogen oxide is made in contact with water, the nitric acid of various concentration gets formed. Only thing you have to remember that there is another gas that is formed that is nitric oxide, which is again the required product of the first reaction. So, again the first reaction you need the nitric oxide. So, what they do is that they send these particular gas phase. So, you have the gas phase uh, in this particular absorption, there is the gas phase and liquid phase. This reaction usually occurs in the liquid phase. So, the gas phase will consist primarily of this nitric oxide. The nitric oxide you then again send back, make some process, you send back it to the catalytic oxidation part where the catalytic oxidation takes place. So, the, you can see the high exothermicity of this reaction 907, 113, minus 37, okay. So, the first reaction, let us see the first reaction, step 1, which is ammonia oxidation. So, what is ammonia oxidation? Ammonia oxidation we have just now seen because ammonia needs to be converted to nitric oxide. But 
if we want to write it, it looks very easy, but it is not that easy to actually proceed because there is a term called as selectivity. So, it may not be selective towards formation of nitric oxide because why is it? Because this reaction occurs. Ammonia reacts with oxygen to form nitrogen gas. So, nitrogen gas is not our desired product because if you see from the figure, the figure is showing here what they did is they calculate the Gibbs energy of formation of the products and the reactants. Okay. They subtracted those. So, you have delta G of products minus delta G of reactants. They have subtracted those and then they have made this y axis and then the x axis is temperature. So, if you see uh, irrespective of temperature, the reaction which is for ammonia reacts with oxygen to form nitrogen is more probable. When I am saying it is more probable because the delta G value is more negative. So, when you have a more negative delta G value, it implies that reaction proceeds in that direction. And if you compare with the other reaction, which is our desired reaction of ammonia oxidation, that is a bit higher. So, how to solve this? Because we require this reaction to occur. The way to occur is, I mean how to proceed is, you use a selective catalyst. A selective catalyst, here comes the catalyst now in the picture. You select a catalyst, it is a combination of rhodium and platinum. You select it in such a manner so that this reaction proceeds and you conduct this reaction in a very small time. So, what are the beneficial which is the way use a use a selective catalyst short reaction time short reaction time usually it is the order of 10 to the power of minus 3 seconds short reaction time and high temperature. So, combination of all these will land you up in this reaction, this one. So, we want to avoid uh, this one particular reaction, we want to avoid this, this is our desired reaction. This helps the reactant that is with the help of the catalyst, this delta G values reduces so that you can now carry out the desired reaction. So, the second reaction, what is the second reaction? The nitrogen oxide which is formed, it is converted to nitrogen dioxide. This nitrogen dioxide takes place at high pressure and low temperature, which is quite inherent. So, this particular plot, what it shows it, it shows the temperature variation with a mixture of NO2, N2O4 and NO. So, if you have a stoichiometric, let us say you have a stoichiometric mixture of NO2, NO and this N2O4. Suppose you have these three, if you have these three, how does the concentration decreases with temperature? This is equilibrium concentration because this reaction, what is that reaction? Is NO2, NO plus half of O2 is equal to NO2. Okay. So, NO, the rate of reaction of NO is directly proportional to the partial pressure of NO2 into partial pressure of oxygen. So, this NO2 rate, this particular rate of the reaction is made in such a manner that the reaction rate coefficient increases with decreasing temperature. So, the reaction is favored by a low temperature not only thermodynamically but also kinetically. So, this is a classic example where the reaction is favored both kinetically and thermodynamically favorable. So, if you see this particular reaction, the NO2 is uh, concentration, the formation of NO2 is favored at a low temperature and a high pressure. Okay. So, low temperature and high pressure is favorable for this one. Fine. And uh, you see that uh, NO2 concentration is always higher than N2O4 at lower temperature, while NO concentration goes up 
uh, with higher temperature. So, it is better to always use a lower temperature so that NO2 formation is our desired product. So, now how do we club these two methods? The first method just now I have discussed is method 1 which is oxidation, condensation and absorption. So, we have discussed these two oxidation and condensation and what does this absorption means? The absorption means the NO2 gas, nitrogen dioxide gas which is formed in the second step, you make it in contact with water in an absorption column. While you do a contact with absorption column, you get the desired nitric acid. Okay. The second method is nitric acid may be made from a weak nitric acid. Suppose you already have a weak nitric acid, you want to increase the strength. What you do is you do these steps, dehydration, bleaching, condensation and absorption so that you get 90 percent nitric acid. So, we go with the absorption first, then we go to method 2. So, these are the three uh, just I want to again summarize what we have done or what we have read so far. This is the ammonia oxidation reaction, okay. this is the ammonia oxidation reaction, this is nitric oxide oxidation reaction. So, this reaction, this particular reaction is a classic example of a third order reaction, okay. so which is not so common. The third order is a third order reaction few reactions which is of known which is of third order and it is non catalyzed reaction. So, remember the two things the third order reaction and it is non catalyzed. This is catalyzed because it consists a catalyst of platinum plus rhodium, okay. catalyst of platinum plus rhodium. So, temperatures pressure conditions we will see. In the third step the absorption step what you do is the product NO2 is made in contact with water in a big counter current absorption tower where liquid nitric acid is formed of desired strength. The nitric oxide form is again then sent back to the ammonia oxidation or the where the nitric oxide oxidation can occur. Okay? So, how the step 1 let us go with the details. The so, step 1 is ammonia oxidation. So, ammonia and air are taken in the mixture of 1 is to 9 and it is oxidized at a temperature of 750 to 800 degrees Celsius at this particular temperature. Then a catalyst used is 90 percent platinum and 10 percent rhodium gauze. So, it is something like that platinum is made to be on the rhodium gas. So, that rhodium gauze and platinum together is 90 10 combination. So, oxidation temperatures vary from this temperature 750 to 800 degrees Celsius, 150 Kelvin. So, increased catalyst temperature enhance the selectivity of the reaction towards NO generation. Okay. The catalyst operating at lower temperatures are more selective for less valuable product. So, your uh, desired temperature should be around 1150, otherwise you will be more selective towards less valuable products. Nitric oxide is a known criterion pollutant whereas nitrous oxide is a global warming gas. So, we are not producing nitrous oxide, we are producing nitric oxide. So, we should be careful that only nitric oxide is produced because nitrous oxide is a global warming gas. This is for step 1. Step 2, the ammonia oxidation produces nitric oxide which must be oxidized. The nitrogen tetroxide is a liquid dimer. So, I told you this NO2 when it is formed, it is in equilibrium with the dimer. And 2O4. So, it reacts non catalytically with residual oxygen. It is a slow homogeneous reaction, it operates at low temperature and high pressures. So, pressures will be high because you know because you have 3 moles of the reactants versus 2 moles of product. So, based on the Le Chatelier's principle, so if you increase the pressure, you will have higher and higher product and a short response time. Okay? And finally, the third step, third step is this reaction. So, it introduces the combination of nitrogen dioxide and dimer into the absorption process. Now, the oxidation happens between the trays while the absorption occurs on the trays. So, it is a absorption column has number of trays and on this the both absorption occurs as well as the oxidation also occurs. The absorption trays are sieve or bubble cap trays, the column is blown with air to reoxidize the NO. So, the oxygen present because this absorption takes place 
in gas phase and liquid phase both. Why? Because in the liquid phase this reaction takes place, in the gas phase you blow air so as to deoxidize the NO because NO is one of the product. Nitric acid is extracted from an aqueous solution in the concentration of this 55 to 65 percent. So a standard uh, nitric acid plant uh, produces nitric acid of 55 to 65 percent strength. The acid concentration is temperature and pressure dependent and is dependent on the number of absorption stages and the concentration of nitrogen oxides entering the absorber. So different plants worldwide produce the strength between 30 to 70 percent. Now what do you mean by extended absorption? Because there will be NOx also getting formed. So how to remove that NOx? It means that you do a extended absorption. What do you mean by extended absorption means you use a series of absorption towers. Instead of one absorption tower, you use more than one absorption tower. You increase the height, you increase the liquid so that more and more it getting absorbed, lesser the chance of having NOx. NO nitrogen oxide, nitric oxide is not a problem. The issue is NO, it can be easily be taken and put in the ammonia catalytic oxidation column in the first step, but NOx in this manner it actually reduces. So extended absorption pertains to that term where we use more number of either stages or more number of columns. So this extended absorption can be used for retrofit application. So in the generic nitric acid plant you have either single pressure process or a dual pressure process. So single pressure process operates at a high pressure of 7 to 12 bar, it has a higher catalytic temperature and a selective catalytic reduction is required to remove NOx. I will come to that the selective catalytic reduction later. A dual pressure what it does is it operates at a high pressure. So the absorption will operate at a very high pressure while the ammonia oxidation will occur at a low pressure. Only difference is between the single and dual is a compressor is placed between the ammonia conversion unit and the absorption stages. So the NOx recovery and conversion is achieved by extended absorption. It means the same thing here in the dual pressure, you use multiple columns or uh, multiple uh, stages to increase the NOx absorption. Okay. So what are the different nitric acid plants? So in the first column, I have mentioned the parameter. In the second one, if I want to operate a nitric acid plant where through the atmospheric pressure, where pressure is 1 bar and if I want to operate the plant at intermediate pressure or high pressure, what will be the, you know, what will be the different uh, parameters, how will they affect? So what are the parameters? Converter pressure, absorption pressure, acid strength produced ammonia to nitric acid conversion, ammonia to nitric oxide conversion, platinum loss. Now this part I have not focused earlier, the catalyst loss is there because what happens is uh, the reaction of ammonia oxidation, the flow of the gas has to be made because it is a flow of the gas, the gas phase reaction. So while the products get formed, it may take out some catalyst particle also. So you have loss of the catalyst particles. So that is also an important economic criteria to choose before you set up a plant. The catalyst temperature and the catalyst life, these three are very important. So catalyst temperature, catalyst life and platinum loss. Platinum loss is means the catalyst material is platinum. So if you see in atmospheric pressure, so what is the pressure actually we are talking about? Pressure lies between 1 to 1.5 bar in a single uh, pressure unit 3.6 bar. Converter pressure, I am talking about the converter pressure, single and dual or single and dual. So uh, this single and dual means what is the converter pressure in a single type process and a dual type pressure. So the pressures are high means this 7, 12, 4, 5 is higher than 3, 6, 0.8 and 1, okay. That is what it is high. Intermediate means these numbers are lying between atmospheric pressure and high pressure. One, what is the absorption pressure? This is carried out in the absorption tower. So absorption pressure is 49 to 52, 53 to 60, 55, 52, 60. The acid strength, the acid strength is given here 49 to 52, 60 to 65, 60 to 62, okay. 
So, what is the ammonia to nitric acid conversion? 93 percent you get in atmospheric pressure, 88, 95 like that, different values for different uh, units. Then ammonia to NO conversion is 97 to 98, 96. So, these are all comparable. Now, platinum loss, grams per ton of nitric acid produced, the loss is less in atmospheric pressure. Uh, it is comparable with respect to the dual unit. But the catalyst temperature required is all are comparable, but uh, in this case the catalyst life, no, these are months, how many months you have to again repeat the number of months, the catalyst you have to again reload the catalyst, this is 8 to 12 months, 4 to 6 months, 12 months like that, okay. So these are the different uh, parameters you consider while you discuss any nitric acid plant. So, this is actually the what a flow sheet of the nitric acid process uh, looks like. This is a single pressure nitric acid process. So, in this single acid nitric acid process, what you have, you have a single pressure applied both in the converter and in the absorption. So, now you see here. So, if you see it is this particular condition 1200 Kelvin 707 to 12 bar is the condition in this ammonia converter. So, you take up air, you take up liquid ammonia, okay. Liquid ammonia is then evaporated, there is some filters lying here, it is just remove the rust particles or other impurities. Then a part is sent to the stripper, I will explain what do you mean by stripper. Then it is again heated, then mixed together and sent it to the catalytic converter. The catalytic converter, this is the place where the catalyst is kept, the platinum rhodium catalyst. So, here the reaction occurs and as the reaction occurs, it is exothermic in nature. So, this heat is taken up by the boiler feed water, it is cold and while it exits, it, we, a steam is generated. So, remaining materials, so since you see there is a flow here going on, while it flows, so it can also take some part of catalyst in this part. So, that is where the catalyst life is reduced. So, while it takes back the catalyst here, so it is a bit uh, cooled and then it is pressure is lowered or it is cooled. Then what it does is it exchanges heat with another of the output which is coming from the absorption tower, we will focus it on later. Then it a condenser is here, a condenser means what happens is in this reaction, this and this together, these two reactions occur. First is your ammonia, this oxygen, it gets converted, I am not uh, balancing, balancing out NO plus uh, H2O, this reaction as well as this reaction, both the reaction happens. You can, so both of these reactions occur here as well as here, okay, here and here in the condenser. So, it means now what you have, you are already having uh, once uh, while you are condensing, you will have water here. This water when it mixes with the nitrogen dioxide, already you are forming some nitric acid, but of low strength. This is actually separated out in a separator. So, this is the liquid nitro ammonia, but the weak acid, we call this as a weak acid of 45 to 50, okay. So, now what happens, the remaining gases, again some heat is exchanged here, is sent to the absorber. So, what I told you now, it is an extended absorption. So, here where the extended absorption takes place. Again, this pressure is the same as the pressure of the ammonia converter. So, cooling water is sent, In these are the different uh, stages. So, water is sent and it is made to contact counter currently with the gases, while the gases uh, do react here. So, there is two different phases which are taking part in the reaction. The one is the gas phase reaction, another is the your liquid phase reaction. So, it is a liquid phase reaction, the final reaction. The liquid phase reaction means what happens here? The NO2 gas is contacted with H2O to get HNO3 plus nitric oxide, 
okay. So, you are getting nitric oxide here. So, here we are sending the nitric oxide again here, so for better intimate contact. So, whatever gases is left here, it will come out and it is coming as NO. So, primarily it is NO plus along with NO, uh, maybe I write out here, you may have NO, some part of NO2 or if I want to write, it is NOx, if I want to club them together, some NOx is coming out. Now, do you throw them out into the atmosphere? No, you cannot do, you cannot throw these gases in the atmosphere uh, because there is some legislation, there is a requirement by government that you cannot throw, if you, in this NO gases can be maximum of such, let us say 2000 parts per volume. So, what you do, you convert them to nitrogen. So, what you do, you send these gases, the remaining residual gases to nitrogen. How do you do that? You do what you called as selective catalytic reduction. So, the, for this NOx abatement, you have two process, selective catalytic reduction and non-selective catalytic reduction. So, what do you mean by selective catalyst reduction? It actually converts ammonia to nitrogen basically, okay. We will talk about that later. It will convert all the NOx to nitrogen. So, then if it is nitrogen, you expand it and throw it in the atmosphere. So, you uh, the most of the research has been done in the terms of SCR because in SCR you require air and ammonia along with nitrogen along with the NOx gases. So, when you are adding these three compounds together, the output will be, it will be converted to nitrogen. So, once it is nitrogen, you can easily vent it out, okay. So, now this is fine, we are uh, getting the NOx abatement. Now, when you have uh, to collect the desired product which is nitric acid, now there may be still some amount of gases which is present inside. So, what we do, we send stripping air. This stripping air, if I want to connect, this is point 1, this stripping air is nothing but coming from here, this particular flow sheet. So, this gas is connected here, stripping air and it again converts the remaining NO2, NO or NO2 back and it is sent back to this, I mean this particular sent here, it is sent here. So, this is not there. So, it is sent here, again sent together. So, it will converts everything to NO2. Second reaction occurs in this case and is sent back to the absorption column, okay. So, in the dual pressure, everything remains the same, everything remains the same. Only thing which changes is this pressures. So, this pressures here it is 4 to 5 bar, here it is 10 to 15 bar, that is the difference. And Another important difference is there is no NOx abatement. So, earlier there was a column which actually converted it to nitrogen, but here there is no NOx abatement. Why it is not NOx abatement? Because the effluent gases while it comes up from the absorption column, it is interacting heat or it is taking up heat from the exit gases from the ammonia converter unit and sent back to the catalytic converter again it gets converted. So, it means that you keep on sending the effluent gases to this catalytic converter until, until all the NOx is converted to NO2. So, all the NOx has to be converted to NO or NO2 both. So, if once that it is done NO or NO2 then only you release the gases, you compress it and you send it outside, okay. So, this is the way you do it. So, it is extended absorption. So, you are absorbing here, here both side. So, I have for convenience, I am showing here only one column, there may be many such columns in series where you can pass the liquid and gases, so that you keep on this NOx concentration, NOx NOx to be minimum. So, otherwise everything process, everything remains the same, you have the absorber unit, separator unit, the ammonia converter unit, then air and liquid ammonia getting mixed together in 1 is to 9 ratio sent to the catalytic. You have the cat same catalyst, only difference is the pressures. Here it is 4 to 5 bar, here it is 10 to 15 bars, okay. This is the difference. So, now 
the important uh, process of this entire nitric acid plant is the compression or expansion. So, in a dual pressure nitric acid, especially the last flow sheet which I show you, you have steam, you can consider a common shaft where all this compressor are collected. So, it means that when steam is entering here, it generates steam turbine. So, this is a high level compressor. When a high level compressor, what happens is the gas from the separator and bleacher, which is at 4.5 bar, is compressed and sent to the gas at observer, which is at 10 to 15 bar. Okay. While the reverse happens in the converter. So, the absorber and converter, you can say you can couple them together. So, it is a high level compressor, it is a medium level compressor. Here, what happens? The air, which is the input stream, is compressed to a pressure to 4 to 5 bar. And this part of some air is sent to the stripper. The stripper, what it does is it converts the residual oxides, which is present in the weak nitric acid, back to nitric nitrogen dioxide. So, it is at 4.5 bar. So, uh, the idea of this common shaft is that uh, the, this expansion process here and this remaining amount of pressure which you require so as to operate these two compressors, the high level compressor, the medium level compressor is sent through a common shaft. So, this shaft are interlinked in the nitric acid plant, that is my objective. So, the amount of, suppose here you are getting some tail gas. So, that tail gas, it has high pressure. So, in this case, it is on high pressure. This particular tail gas, you can use it for compressing this air. That way, it is linked to each other. And the remaining, you can get from the expander, like this. So, they are all interconnected with each other. Okay. So, the step 2 process is a high strength nitric acid production. So, here this is the process where it use extractive distillation to concentrate the weak nitric acid, 99 to 99 percent concentration is produced. In the presence of a dehydrating agent, distillation is carried out. What is the dehydrating agent here? It is concentrated sulfuric acid. The concentration of nitric acid is accomplished by feeding concentrated sulfuric acid and nitric acid at a concentration between 55 to 65 percent. So, whatever you are getting from the earlier plant, if you want to uh, interact with a sulfuric acid, you pass through certain stages, dehydrating column, bleacher, you get strong nitric acid of close to 90 percent. And the remaining you can pass through nitrogen dioxide and oxygen along with air absorb it and then you treat the unreacted gases the way you did it earlier. So, you get weak nitric acid. So, this is another way of getting a strong nitric acid. So, you send it through a sulfuric acid, the process is called extractive distillation, where the concentrated sulfuric acid act as a dehydrating agent. So, NOx abatements, as I told you, you cannot, uh, you know, you cannot throw this NOx in the atmosphere, it has certain regulation. What are the regulation? The nitric oxide exiting a absorber should be in the concentration range of 2000 parts per million. The most widely deployed technologies for NOx abatement existing facilities are a combination of selective catalytic reduction and non-selective catalytic reduction and extended absorption. The NOx processes emissions may be well reduced by adopting modern engineering procedures such as strong acid processes. So, we will see what are this SCR and what are this non-selective catalytic reduction. In a selective catalytic reduction, why is it called selective? Because it does not consume excess oxygen. Temperature here is the primary variable that affects the NOx reduction. The temperature range is between this. The catalysts are made of pellets or spheres. Current catalysts are usually shaped as honeycomb. It is a monolithic catalyst. The monolithic catalyst I have already discussed in the first module. So, this is one example of that. The catalyst for this Selective catalytic reduction have a low pressure drop, wide surface area and high resistance to dust. So, this is the reaction happening. So, when, while these reactions occur, it means you see this whether it is NO or NO2, any NOx, it will react with ammonia and oxygen. This oxygen comes from air to form nitrogen and water. So, this is those reaction where they have researched and found out typical catalyst. But only thing is the cost of the catalyst which can amount to 40 to 60 percent of the operating cost. Okay. So, it means that uh, why it is? It does not consume excess oxygen. 
So, whatever it is oxygen is giving, it is going to convert to water. Then non-selective catalytic reduction, what is that? There is an option to use a simple reducing agent. Instead of ammonia, can we send hydrogen or methane? The only issue is besides NOx, if the input stream has oxygen present, that is also converted. So, the reaction temperature of NSCR is significantly higher than that of SCR. A large excess of oxygen is present and therefore, reduction with simple reducing agents usually is not economic. So, NCSR has advantages that continue to make it a viable option for new and retrofit application in nitric acid plant. So, the heat generated by operating a non-selective catalytic reduction unit can be recovered in a waste heat boiler. Okay. So, it is nothing but uh, you send uh, some source of fuel and you add this particular effluent gases and made them combust together. So, while you do a combustion, then uh, with the help of reducing agent, you convert them. Okay, this is the way the NOx is converted to nitrogen in a non-selective catalytic reduction. So, this actually concludes our lecture for nitric acid. Uh, please go through this uh, textbook where they have given the nitric acid in detail. All the flow sheets have been taken from this textbook. And then I will also suggest you to go to this uh, nitric acid plant. Thyssen Krupp is one of the leaders of manufacturing of the nitric acid process plant. Go through this website and you will come to know about the different unit operation uh, undergoing in the particular nitric acid plant. Thank you. Mm -hmm.